Welcome to another episode of Miss Erica's Crazy Costume Catastrophe. This week, Miss Erica is dressed like a basilisk lizard because we are learning about Jesus walking on water. Let's get started. Kids, this week I want you to read Mark 6 with your mom and dad. When you're reading it, you might think, hey, I think we've read this before. That's because the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 people is in Mark 6. But there's a different story that we haven't looked at yet, where Jesus walks on water. And that's the story we're going to explore today. It does require us to go back in time a little bit on our Bible timeline, but that's okay. It's a really important story, and I didn't want us to miss it. All right, let's get started. First, I want to give you guys a little summary about the book of Mark. We haven't really talked about Mark yet. Mark was written by a guy named John Mark. You can read about him in the book of Acts. He was somebody who started following Jesus later, after Jesus rose from the dead, and he ends up being a traveling companion with Paul. What's funny is that at first, Paul doesn't like him, but later, Paul really sees how he contributes to God's kingdom, and he actually says, send Mark back to me, because he likes him a lot. So that's a fun story to check out another day. But Mark wrote the book of Mark. The entire book of Mark focuses on this question. Is Jesus the Messiah? And Mark uses a bunch of different stories to present this question. People keep encountering Jesus and then they're really wrestling with, who is this guy? Messiah is a big word, but it just means king. And it was a specific king that the Jewish people had been waiting for for hundreds and hundreds of years to bring rescue and healing to them as a people. And they thought this Messiah would come and kick the Romans out. But Jesus came and was a Messiah that they didn't expect. And so this question of, is Jesus the Messiah, is all throughout the book of Mark. The story we're looking at today takes place immediately after Jesus feeds the 5,000. I got my friend Noel to read to us from Mark 6. Take it away, Noel. Mark chapter 6, verses 45 to 52. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side of Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. For they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. Thanks, Noel. You did a great job. I want to focus on what Jesus says to the disciples. Remember, Jesus has sent the disciples out in the boat, and he doesn't go with them. He goes up on a mountain to pray. But the disciples are out there in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. They have no idea where Jesus is. And there's this huge wind coming, and it's actually tossing the waves around, making it really hard to row or go anywhere. And they've just been out there struggling all night. The Bible says it's the middle of the night, probably like 4 or 5 a.m., and it's dark everywhere, and the disciples are getting really scared. They have no idea where Jesus is, and they don't know what he's up to. And then they see Jesus walking on the water. But they don't know it's Jesus, and so they freak out and they actually scream. Can you guys show me your best Macaulay Culkin scream? <coughs> Very good. Okay, so they are just super scared. So Jesus sees them screaming and freaking out, and he says these words. Be courageous. It is I. Do not be afraid. I want to focus on that first word, be courageous. The word is tharseo, and it does mean courage, but it doesn't mean the kind of courage that you're probably thinking of. Tharseo isn't the kind of courage where you're afraid of going to the bathroom in the middle of the night because it's dark. 
but your mom tells you, it's okay, just run in there and turn on the light. And so that's what you do. You wake up at 3 a.m. because you have to go potty and you're just suck it up and you run in there and you turn on the light and it's okay. That's not Tharseo. That is a kind of courage, but that's not what Tharseo means. Tharseo is a kind of courage where God gives courage to you. He puts it in your heart and then it oozes out to all of the rest of you. And so it's a kind of courage where you have to get it from God. He puts it deep inside your heart and then you let it seep or spread to all of you. Tharseo is living out something on the outside that God is producing in you on the inside. The disciples were in a scary situation. They didn't know where Jesus was or what he was doing. But Jesus wants them to remember that he wants to give them his courage, his faith, his boldness, and let it seep and ooze and spread out of them into all other situations. You see, Jesus knew that soon he was going to die and raise from the dead and then go back up into the sky. And he knew that these same disciples sitting in the boat were going to experience much scarier situations. And he wanted them to remember that he was going to produce courage in them. He was going to give it to them through his spirit. And then they would need that courage as they went out into all the world. They would need to let God's courage that he had given them ooze and spread into all of them as they went out and proclaimed his good news. We are in scary situations too. Jesus has big plans for you and me, but some of them might be scary. Sometimes we're not going to know where Jesus is or what he's doing. Maybe some of you feel like that right now. We're in the middle of a pandemic, but God is still on the move and he still has plans for you and me. He is still sending us out into situations that might seem scary or frightening. But I want us to remember that Jesus is also promising to produce courage in us, to give us his courage through his spirit, to put it deep inside of us and then let it spread out to all of who we are so that everywhere we go, we have Jesus's courage living out through us. Remember, Jesus wants to produce on the outside what he is producing on the inside of you. He wants you to live out of his boldness, his courage, his faith, because he is producing those things inside of you. This week, I want you to spend some time with Jesus and just tell him how you feel, especially about things that you're afraid of. You can be really honest with Jesus and tell him exactly what you're afraid of. He won't laugh at you. Nothing is too silly or embarrassing for you to tell to Jesus. Ask Jesus to give you his courage and give him permission to create God's boldness in you. And then go and live out on the outside what Jesus is doing in you on the inside. All right, guys, it's been so fun hanging out with you. Thanks for watching another episode of Miss Erica's Crazy Costume Catastrophe. All right, guys, remember this Sunday at 1030 a.m., we have another family large group. So get on Zoom, get your mom and dad, get your Bibles, and I will see you there. I'm really excited to explore God's word with you and to go a little deeper into this story of Mark 6. I'll see you there. Bye.